I'm Doug, Barefoot Adventure, and this is day 56 of my adventure to create one video every single day for 1,000 days. And it's going to be quite a trip along the way. So, I'm a horse whisperer. I, I said, in case you didn't hear, I'm a horse whisperer. At least that's what people call me been here on the ranch for four years and tonight right before I sat down to make the video it just really hit me that I'm entering in starting tomorrow is my last week here and when I came here it was heaven it really really was a little piece of heaven I would look um, you know the way my little trailer is situated that's my door and I have a little window and I could look out and all I could see is just woods and a few horses and just green pastures. It was just beautiful. The main barns and everything is up behind me. But it was just that way. It was just, it was heaven. So, yeah, it was a beautiful place to come here. And that's where I did my meditation here. I connected to the horses. And even though I'm doing work in the morning, and, it, you know, it's hard work in the mornings. Those hours that I spent doing that, I could put in my headphones, listen to meditation music, I could listen to audio books, you know, study, you know, watch the sunrise every morning. It was just so beautiful of what happened. So it was amazing. Then there were the horses. When I came here, I... When I grew up, I loved horses. I, I was born in Texas. I loved the Lone Ranger. It's just I had you know the little model horses, you know, when I was a kid. Yet, because of something that happened in summer camp, and then a few things that happened while um, when I got into backpacking, had some really negative encounters with some horse people. I got a bad you know taste for horses. Then I came here, and the husband owner of the place he still hates horses. You wouldn't believe what he does here. Anyway, so I come here and now I have a, you know someone that also doesn't like horses. And in the beginning, for like the first six months, when you know the problem with the horse, my comment was, well, put a bullet in his head. And the owner, you know, the male owner, which is kind of a joke, you know, and laugh with me. And then something happened, and I'll have to tell about that story where I learned how to love horses, and it was just quite amazing. What happened then? Because I brought my um, Reiki energy work into horses, I started connecting to horses. I, I started talking to horses. I started using my energy Reiki with horses and actually, you know, doing healing work with horses that I saw had problems. I started getting amazing results and I, I started connecting with horses and things started happening and people started noticing this and this is where the horse whisperer thing came in because other people started mentioning it and the owner of the ranch she would even come to me and start asking me questions about different horses and what I thought of them and she's been with horses and raised horses all her life and the real kicker was, we had a horse here that was, um, uh, um, in, uh, infertilized or whatever it is, <laughs> and it, um, and it um, had a cult here. But before it gave birth, they had a doctor come in, the vet, and give a date of when it was supposed to be due. Well, that date came and left, and they were trying to figure it out they came to me and asked me and so I you know went and was with a horse for a bit and I gave a date and I gave a date and it wasn't going to be for two weeks and everyone was like oh and well actually what I did I, I did put a little bit into you know just what I feel and I, I okay it's just a guess yet I also knew that the full moon was coming and I knew there was something in with the full moon. Sure enough, when I checked in with the full moon, um, there's a little bit about, you know, giving birth on a, um, during a full moon and, you know, just all of the things that go into it. It's safer to give birth during a full moon because it's brighter. And, you know, just, and it is yay or nay whether that's true. So I gave this um, prediction. And what happened was they gave birth, like, two and a half weeks. It was a little bit longer. Yet, I was closer than the vet. <laughs> 
So all of these things, that's why, you know, I gave him the name, you know, the Horse Whisperer. Now here's where it really gets strange, and um, if you saw the little uh, thumbnail for my um, video here, uh, Dead Horse, we've had about four horses have died here, and I, th I think five since I've been here. And I've been going over tonight, and every one was strange, and I, I, I knew something was going to happen. Uh, the first one was the owner's horse. The owner just fed it. Um, I came in, you know, behind, you know, I was doing my work cleaning up, and I detected something. So I went to the owner, and the owner was like, oh, I was just there. And so she went out, and she got the horse and walked it out into the arena. And next thing I know, the vet's coming in. And... A little while later, um, the owner came to me and said they put the horse down. And what had happened is they walked it into the arena and the horse kind of a little bit collapsed. And she says if she hadn't have done that, this was a big horse, it would have died either in the stall or in the pasture. And the way they have to get them out is they hook this, a truck comes in, they hook a chain to the legs and just drag it in. And when they're in the stall, it's a nightmare getting them out. And so luckily it was in the arena. I was thanked by the owner because I sensed and saw it first. The next time, I was down in the lower barns and there was a horse and it was just, it was being a little bit more affectionate and, you know, just kind of like wanting my attention. And so I was petting it, you know, and doing everything. And as I left, I just, I was out of the barn in a way, and I just felt something, and I turned back and looked. And it was like a twinkle in the horse's eye. And I remember I, I looked, and I turned back, and I went, something's going to happen. Sure enough, that horse died the next day. Um, there was another one, I'll come back to that, but then a really strange one was, we had a horse here and had a, um, the owner of it was a young girl, she was in her 20s. Um, she and the, her grandmother would come and take care of the horse, but it was mostly the younger girl. Well, the younger girl gets pregnant, and the horse gets sick. And there's one day in particular that I'm out, and the horse is laying down, and I'm like, okay, is this horse okay? And I go over to it, and I, I, I'm doing energy work Reiki with it, and it's, as soon as I start doing it, it looks at me and it just pops up. And I got the sense of, it's okay. And I felt good. It was, it's, it's running around, and I remember. And it went and got, ate some hay, and it got some water. And I'm going back up to the barn, and this is early in the morning, and the owners come in. It was both the um, granddaughter and the daughter, and they had this sad look on their face. And I go, hey, how you doing? And they go, oh, we're going to have to put the horse down. <laughs> so I'm like, what? I was like, uh, I, I was a little dumbfounded. Because I just was the horse and it's fine. I go into the barn, start doing my work. And I look, I can, I can see out and I can see the vet truck go by. And I come back out. And I can see the vet going down, and the horse is already laying down. And come to find out, the horse died before the vet had even made it to them. I believe in my heart that those people went down there with the intention of saying goodbye to the horse. I believe that the horse was going downhill because the young, the girl who had gotten pregnant was putting in her tension. You could tell by the way she was talking, even with the horse around, she was talking about the baby. And so she was taking attention away from the horse. I sensed something was going on there. And I, well, I sensed the horse was okay. When the horse died, I believe that was the reason the horse died, because there was no injections given. I was trying to remember this other time. Um, 
and I won't go into really details, but it was, it's just basically, it was another situation of, uh, yeah, I was just looking down because I was rolling all this stuff in my head, of, let's just say there was a horse that had all sorts of problems and it really messed up its stall, it crapped everywhere. When the owner left for a couple, God, what was it, about two months? The stall was clean. The horse went outside. The horse was fine. The horse was friendly. It was everything. The owner comes back, and the horse starts making a mess and everything. And the horse. Also, let's let's note that this was a very sickly horse. And when the horse owner was gone, the horse was happy and peppy. The horse comes back, or the owner comes back, and the horse starts going downhill. And died. Um. I saw that one coming a mile away. I didn't know. It wasn't any certainty, but I just, I could tell the energy that this person was putting into the horse. Um, this person also had a lot of sicknesses and illnesses and constantly talked about them. And so that's why I believe it went into the horse. <sighs> today. Now, today was very interesting. Got a lot done on my trailer and I look out into a pasture where there's a horse. Um, in Reiki, I've been studying Reiki and horses um, for quite a while now, especially being here, and I find almost all the information about Reiki and energy work on horses, almost all of it is over in England. And one of the big things I found was the idea of when a horse comes in, you need to clean the stall out. It's, it's kind of like going to sleep in someone's dirty bed. Also, people don't realize they bring a horse from another place where it knows, they bring it to a new stable, and I see this over and over again. You bring it into a new environment with new horses, with new everything. Hi, here's your home. Goodbye. And the horses get a little freaked out. Well, to, yesterday we had a horse, and I didn't pick up on it dying, mainly because I'm not paying attention, I'm ready to get the lead. But looking back, I can see the horse was very standoffish and wasn't even around me. Well, yesterday they put the horse down. I won't go into it, but there's something with the owner or two. I, there's a lot of stuff between owner and horse. I'll have to talk about it in another video. Anyways, the horse dies. And this is a dead horse stall. <laughs> you know, there, it's just this energy. Well, I'm out in my trailer working, looking out, and all of a sudden somebody comes out and puts a new horse in there. And this horse goes nuts. It first just runs to the other end, and the owner looks at it, oh, you're enjoying a larger stall, because it is a larger, greener place than the one it was in. But no, this horse just runs all the way around the thing, comes into the, the stall area, and just, it's snorting like crazy, pawing, spinning around, and runs back out. It's just going crazy. It did that for two hours until finally the owner came and took it out of the stall. I almost went in, you know, out and said something to the person, except I just literally went, I'm out of here. I 100% believe there is energy, and especially with dead animals and dead humans. A ghost, I'm not... I'm going to keep a non-skeptical thinking. It's something I learned in my firewalk. It's just not something I want to look into. Yet, I do believe the energy is still there, and I've seen it with animals, I've seen it with horses, and I saw it with this dead horse today, because I know this horse, and it doesn't act like this. This was something, it was possessed, it was crazy. So, yeah, energy and horses. This is my last week here. I have learned so much about horses. I've learned so much about energy work. I've learned so much about myself. I can't wait to see what this next adventure is going to be. Got a lot to do in this last week. We'll see what happens. That's it for now. Take care. See you tomorrow.